Okay, hey gang, uh, welcome to our first live seminar. Uh, I'm Coach Jeff Berger and I'm going to be your tour guide through this mode of violence today. And uh, today's topic is clinch. Um, I really like clinch because it's that first, that first range when you're closing with an opponent where you get to take out a big chunk of luck out of the game. And what I mean by that is, you know, we've all heard that expression, oh, he got in a lucky punch, right? Okay, why is it that people can get in lucky punches? Because anybody, even with no training, can, you know, haul off, wind up, hit you, and they can generate enough power uh, to make it hurt, right? And uh, so the closer you get, that doesn't happen. Like once you're up really close to somebody, if you don't know what your natural, you know, weapons are, if you don't know how to, you know, generate power, because most people can only generate power, you know, over distance swinging their hips, if you don't know how to generate power, if you don't know how to manipulate a body up close, if you don't have that tactile awareness that when you're touching somebody, their movement, you can know what that is, you can't fight up close, right? So that's, uh, that's a re one of the reasons I really like clinch. Um, you know, that, that same equation for fighting up close works on the ground, but I don't want to, you don't always want to be in the ground, right? Standing up, doing a clinch, you can fight multiple opponents with that, and the other guy's kind of your meat shield, right? We won't do too much of that today. Um, what we're going to cover today is, is Muay Thai clinch, specifically Muay Thai level, our Muay Thai level one clinch. There's different answers to the clinch, right? There's a standing grappling answer to the clinch, and that would be, you know, judo, wrestling, traditional jiu-jitsu. Uh, I specifically mentioned the traditional jiu-jitsu because that's where all your everything goes, you know, groin, ice, throat, neck breaks, and stuff like that, right? What we're going to be doing today is stuff that guys do in amateur uh, Muay Thai um, clinch competition, when, they, when they're in competition when they're clinching, okay? Um, we won't do a lot of elbows. Uh, I, I love elbows. They're not allowed in amateur. Um, and I also think elbows deserves its own seminar, okay? So uh, enough of that. Let's, uh, let's get into this. And I'm going to use Matt for my partner most of today. And um, we're going to start with something called uh, the double neckties, okay? And I want you to pay attention to a few things. One, if I have this structure, these bones are straight at him. Reach around, grab me, try to pull me in close. He can't. It actually hurts you a little bit, right? And I use no power to do this because it's just a structure, okay? So I'm going to have some of that. I put my hands behind his neck, and I'm going to show you guys the wrong way and a good way. And uh, when I show you guys this stuff and I say play with it, do it fast. Because you guys who've trained with me before, uh, I want you to, you know, feel the wrong way, feel the right way. Okay, next thing. Right, we're not going to play with it for, for five minutes. For some of this stuff, we might practice it for two minutes, but I'm going to fly through stuff because there's a lot of information I want to do on the board. But I want you to try that. Do the hug, and then I want you to do this. You're going to put your hands down low on his neck, and you're going to try to pull his head down, and don't let me. Okay? He can fight that. What I want to do is, and watch my hands here, I want to get him up high on his head. If I'm too high, I slide off. Okay? So there's a sweet spot right about the base of his skull. Ready? Fight it now and I get it a little more, okay? Another de detail here, watch my inside hand. I'm gonna grow the inside hand. Now I have more leverage and my outside hand can help it. So fight it now, right? And it ends up being a lot better. So what I want you to practice, I want you to practice feeling this st structure. He's gonna hug, pull me in, he shouldn't be able to. Put your hands down low on his neck. He tries to fight it, yep, fight this, and he can. Put it up a little higher, fight it, and I can get a little easier. Grow the inside hand, fight it again, and it's even easier for me. Give it a try with your partner real quick. I'll work with you for this one right now. So first I want you to, yep, put your elbows here, and when I pull you in, it's, and it's free power, yep. there's no muscle needed at all. Put your hands low on my neck, okay, and try to pull my head down, okay? Put them up a little higher, pull my head down. You get it. Put your hands there again. Now take your inside hand and grow it a little bit, like a little higher. Yeah, right about, the, right about there. Go ahead. Right, and even you feel I'm fighting you and I yeah. can't. Okay, good. Everybody got a chance to feel those? Like I said, I'm going to fly through stuff. But this, the details of this double necktie are important. Yeah, make, both sides got a turn. Okay, Matt. Okay, 
Next thing I'm going to do to get his head down. Maybe I can't do that. Maybe I just want to make it easier for myself. Go ahead. You're fighting this. And he's not letting me pull his head down. Where's he fighting? All his muscles are going that way. So go ahead. You fight it. I take him sideways. Now where are all his muscles going? That way. Right? If I do this, he's fighting that way. When I, so then I, it's easy to take him this way. Now where's he fighting? That way. So now I could take him forward where I want. And we call it the juke. I call it juking. Kind of like that's the football move for that, right? When you do that little cutback. So have your hands up here. You're pulling his head down sideways and into your chest. And make it, go ahead, fight it. Give that quick little zigzag. All right? Go ahead. The juke. Yep, I'll be your partner for a bunch of these. So I'm fighting it. <clears throat> right, right. So give it that little zigzag. <clears throat> yep, good. Makes it easier, right? There you go. Okay. Uh, next one. I'm going to use for this because you're tall. And uh, this one we call the sh shoulder sandwich. And uh, I was really kind of bummed that I wish Conor McGregor's fight was tonight or next week. Because one of the things we use a lot in the clinch is we'll use our shoulder. I use my shoulder. And he did it. So now it looks like I'm copying. But I had me on video doing it a few years ago. We did a demo. This works nice if you're tall. It's not going to work well on him versus me. But he's fighting this. Go ahead. Fight it. And boom, slam that shoulder. And I'm being nice. Use control, right? <laughs> if you don't trust your partner, put your hand here. I've been throwing shoulder butts longer than you guys. So do this, because if you don't think they hurt, that guy got broken nose, broke his occipital bone, and stuff like that. There's a lot in the shoulder. So he's fighting this. I want you to jump up and throw your stance back. So fight it, right? Bam, right? So that you sit back. And look, I'm loaded to knee. So when you throw that up, Throw this out. There's no way he's going to hold your body if my body was out 90 degrees here. If he's standing like this with your body out 90 degrees, you're going to get your ass kicked anyway. <laughs> All right? So go ahead. Try that. Shoulder sandwich. <laughs> right? So if I'm fighting this, wham. Yeah, right? So, so let's do this. When you jump up, uh -huh. if that's a shoulder you're hitting with, throw that leg back. So throw get your feet together. Yeah. So keep your feet kind of together. Jump up, go ahead, smash, and throw. No, now keep me there. Don't just shoulder butt me. Keep me there. Yep. All right. Do it again. So. Bing, keep me there. Yeah. So the knee, right? Yep. Hold on. Okay, guys. So, let me uh, use Brian again. Detail on this. It's not just the shoulder butt, right? You could smash and come back down. It's the shoulder sandwich. I keep it there. I want to stay connected with him when I pull him down, okay? You could shoulder butt, shoulder butt, shoulder sandwich. I don't care, right? But with the sandwich part, stay stuck to him, okay? Go ahead. What's this? Bing. Yeah! Feel the difference? Yep. Good. Yep. Bang. Good. Yeah, a little separation on that one again. Boom. Yeah. yeah Good. See. Right. Everybody got it? Okay. So one of the reasons uh, I want to do um, seminars this way, like my first video I did, I originally had planned, planned to have uh, me and one of my students who really knows the material, and we're just going to come in front of the camera, blah, blah, blah. And we would have flown through it, right? The hardest part about the downside of learning through video is there's no teacher there to make your mistakes, or to fix your mistakes, right? So one of the cool things that happened in that video was, even though those guys are martial artists, they didn't know my material, and they made mistakes, and we got to fix them. So stuff like that, like people are, oh, it's shoulder button, pull his head down. Okay, you could. Maybe that shoulder butt weakened them, but that shoulder sandwich is leveraged to really bring them down. Okay, next one I'm going to show you, Matt. There's going to be a new one for you. No. He, I know. He's, uh, he was at my very first clinch seminar years ago and one of the only guys who did the level two we only did one level two seminar right he was around too <laughs> so uh this one i want you to do so my hands are like this in the clinch right i like you to hook your hand you're going to rotate this that you're hooked here okay and then you're going to punch 
right? And what this does is it's going to, watch what this does to his head. See how it rolls his head sideways to weaken him? Now, I used to call this the gangster because it looks like the gangster thing. And then we had this girl in class who was just like, uh, she looked like she's out of a normal Rockwell painting, right? She's like the all-American apple pie girl. And she's like, we got to move like that in cheerleading. And I'm like, <laughs> well, we're going to call that the cheerleader then, right? Um, and you guys know Train With Me for a while. We always try to give our own little names to stuff, right? Plus, it helps when you're in a fight. I could yell an instruction out to you, and the other guy has no idea what it is. Plus, I like fun names. Uh, one of the things that uh, I see with a lot of martial art people, especially when you start getting to people who are like in the reality-based, self-defense stuff, everything gets dark and scary and badass, and everybody just kind of turns into a paranoid jerk, and they're not having fun anymore. Have fun, OK? So when I'm here doing this, right, I'm, gonna, I'm on these bones. I'm going to rotate to this, OK? And when I punch, it's going to create a leverage. Look what it does to his head. See how much that turns his head over, right? So I have, because I have one point here and one point here, right? One's high, one low, doing this with lots of leverage on it. And uh, let me try it on you. And we're going to pull him out a lot because 6'3", 290, right? Yes. OK, so if it works on Brian, we're going to say it works, OK? <laughs> so if I'm here and I turn this, right, and I got, and, and go ahead, you're going to fight this, go. Come on, 290, <laughs> right? And I still got it without too much effort, OK? So give it a try, the cheerleader. <laughs> Is there like a, a dominant side I can do on this? Or like you might, you'll find one. Right. You might find one, right? I don't want to tell you if there is one, because then you're going to try for that. All right. Because you might, like, one move on one side and one on another. So it was here again. Yeah. And then. Yeah, let me see how you're doing this in the air. So match me. Grab this. Reach to this. Reach to these bones, right? Now punch. No. So see how it does, see how it makes this scissors? Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And guys, this is the only time during the day when I really want you cranking on people. Okay? You need you help with it? Where's your uh, hands? So I went from here, right? It was kind of on these bones, because I tried to connect this hand to this hand, right? When I'm doing the other one, yeah. right? I rotate to this side of my forearm. And hold on to that. Because watch, when I do this, see how that's a gear? I gotcha. Look how this forearm, my, my, so my hand fits the shape of that forearm now. When I do this, that's a gear. This is a hard movement to get power off of. That is an easy movement to get power off of. So this gears the other one. Okay. Go ahead, give it a try. Yeah, just throw, literally, ready? Throw, throw a punch, punch, punch my hand. Yeah, see how much really torques his head over? Right. So, ready? No, ready? Put your hands this way. We'll grab this, go to this. Right, punch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? It's just an overwhelming force for your neck. Right? Okay. Next piece I want you to do while we're in here is uh, I want you to work this posture. And I want you to so want you put your feet out, and people call this the penguin or the duck, but the whole posture, Ben and Tuck, I call this Charlie Chaplin. Right? That's how he walked, right? Okay. So here's what I want you to do. Matt's gonna grab me, and I'm gonna have, and you guys are gonna try this. You're gonna start with your feet straight ahead, and he's gonna pull me to the side. Yeah. And then the other side, and I can't do anything about it. Okay. If I bend and I tuck and I put my feet out, go ahead. It's not perfect. But it's a lot, right? Go, go the other way, right? All of a sudden, I have, right, a lot more control, right? And I'm kind of, go ahead, I'm kind of getting this in there, right? Right, so right here, feet out, bend, tuck. If you've ever done Tai Chi, the pelvic tilt, Charlie Chaplin, go ahead. <laughs> Start with your toes straight, pull them side to side, right? So start with your toes straight. And I'm going to move you side to side. And there's yep. shit you can do about it. Now, toes out, bend, tuck. Ready? Don't let me move you. Big difference, right? Go ahead. You try it on me, just so you feel the difference. 
my feet are straight, move me side to side, and I'm just going to go. Right? I bend, I tuck, whoop, my toes are out, go ahead. Right? Solid. Right? You just have that little bit of base to work from. Right? What's that? I would never stand like that in my life until I just learned that. Well, I'm not going to stand like that when he no, came. No, we're out here and he can kick me in the balls, but right. once, we're, once we're in the clinch, right? Because yeah. I don't need, he's part of my stance now. Uh, something that a lot of people miss in martial arts, there's one stance that people are missing, and I think it's a real important one, and I call it the us stance, when he's part of my balance, right? You're a karate guy, yeah. right? Hold out a, which one of your strongest punches? Hold out a punch, your strongest punch. Boom, okay. But here's the deal, if it's just there, it's nothing until he starts putting weight on me. So I'm part of your stance now, that transfer of weight, yeah. right? That's, that's what you, you want, some of that, right? Okay, next I want to uh, talk about different ways to throw a knee. Monique, will you have me the green stick there? The green tape one on the bottom? Just because this is the crappiest dowel that we got from Home Depot. Kids learn your stick forms we can learn with crappy sticks. Matt? So this is like a $1.50 stick from the Home Depot store, right? If I whip this at his head, right, it'll hurt, but it's going to break. If he really wants to fight me, he's probably pretty pissed off and wants to fight me now, okay? If I take this like a pool cue and go, dunk, he's probably dead, right? Or you can go up the hardwood. You can take a crappy dowel like this, go up the hardwood and put dents in it all day long. I won't damage this, okay? I want you to think about that with your strikes. That, uh, I'm going to turn you sideways to the camera for a bit. And here's another thing, guys. Like, when you're demoing something on somebody or you do it in class, you don't have to hurt people to know that it would work, right? Do as minimal as possible to show that there's a difference in the structure of the work or the you know, the results that come back without hurting your partner, okay? If I do this type of ninja, uh, knee where I hinge, see how it's just kind of bumping them and it slides off, right? I want you to have a spear. I want you to think of your femur like a battering ram, boom. And just a tap, you feel like that's a structure It's gonna displace mass, okay? Even when I do a hinging knee, I'm not doing a real hinge. I'm pulling a spear. Now I'm going to pull this spear. See how it's different? It might have been a hinge of this motion, but I pulled that spear. Right? So I want you to feel on your part. Don't, I don't want to see everybody limp in with Charlie horses afterwards. Do this as light as you can to feel a difference. I do a hinge, and it hits them, but it kind of bumps and slides off. Right? Then I pick this up. I call this one the Motown. Right? Boom. Okay? And then the other one I have is called a pull spear. Boom. Right? That you're stabbing with all of this shin bone. Boom. Give it a try. Go light. So just do a, just, just a hinge, right? Boom, boom, boom. Right? Now do that Motown where you pick it up first and then drive. Boom. So one of the things, so this is the Motown, one of the things they say, every guy needs to have this motion, dude. Okay? Come on. <laughs> so, you know, bang. Right? So bring the knee up and then just push it, push it forward because that structure, boom, goes through. The pull one takes a little practice. Yeah. Boom. Here. Yeah, so you got that one better than the, than the Motown, right? Usually that one's harder. Story of my life. Yeah. Boom, yeah, good. So I want you to feel these, and I'm not gonna do them hard. Yep. It turns, yep. So if I have this hinge, yep. it hits you, but it just kind of bumps and it slides. If I get this spear, yep. it just g keeps going. And the other one is the pull spear, right? So it's just a different weapon, right? Everybody can feel those? Okay, that's how I want you to knee your partner. We're also gonna go slow with this. Um, we're going to come up to the wall, and I want you to be able to where, get where you can kind of see me. I'll, you guys can be on the wall, I'll be on this, right? So cut, everybody come up to the wall, okay? This is how we learn this. So you have this knee, don't hit the wall, just lift your knee, yeah? Now take your back leg, slide it back, that's your new stance. Knee with that back leg. Keep this position, 
slide your leg back. Knee, jump back. Knee, jump back. Knee, jump, knee, jump, knee, jump, knee, jump, knee, jump, knee, jump. Okay? That's a running man. Okay? So now you guys can all go to the club next weekend and. Okay, right? <laughs> okay. So when you do that with your partner, okay? You start and don't hit them, right? Okay? We're gonna knee, back, knee, back, knee, back, knee, back. Okay? Then I want you to do this. I want you to do, uh, we're gonna be nice and call this shake and not stirred. Because we used to say, uh, <laughs> an on PC name for this is uh, shaking baby for adults. Okay? <laughs> when I knee him, I pull in. When I fall back, I push him out. Right? Look at my body. <laughs> right? See how my spine's like a bow and arrow here? Right? I pull him in. I push him out. <laughs> I pull him in. I push him out. <laughs> Right? Boom, 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 right? And I'm, you know, shaking but not stirred, right? Because I want to keep them off balance. If you're just sitting here going, well, you might as well have a little red riding hood basket with you and just, <laughs> you know, you're skipping through the forest or something, right? Keep him off balance the whole time. Go. So just try the knees first. Yep. Bing, zoom, bing, zoom, bing, zoom. Now, when you knee me, pull in. Boom. Now put now when now push. Boom. Pull, pull me in. Push me out. Yeah. And use your elbows to push me out. Come pull me out. in. Boom. Oh, yeah. Boom. More. I want you to feel what I'm doing here. When I do this, feel my elbows. Yeah. Boom. Okay. Boom. Boom. All right. Oh yeah. Good. So you guys all feel your, right? I want you to feel that. Feel it for a second. Right. Keep him off balance. He's got ideas that he wants to do too. I want him, I want him in that earthquake, okay? Which leads us to the next one. And on the board it says, big F knee. So when we teach this to kids, it's the big, fabulous, or fantastic knee. When we teach it to grow, grown-ups, it's usually the F-bomb. But we're live today, so we'll be nice. <clears throat> so when you're doing this, running man, you can't do anything for too long, right? So I knee him, I push back, I knee him, I push back, I knee him, watch. When I drop this one, okay, I'm going to whip around, bang, okay? This is why it's called the big F and knee. Because it's this knee, that way, and it starts here. I'm gonna do this, all the slack is out, I'm pulling and pushing, and that's all part of my wind up. And ideally, I want him searching for his balance. How do you search for your balance? What do you do? You use your arms. Mm -hmm. Well, if his arms are trying to save him for balance, they're not defending or attacking me. Always keep him obligated to do something. Keep him off balance, right? So you're in here, again, you don't have to do these hard. One, two, three. When I separate us, boom, right? I'm all stretched out. I whip him around, boom, right? And that's a good, you could keep doing a running man there or send him, right? I'm in here, knee, 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 boom. Big knee, boom, throw him into the ropes, boom, right? Go ahead, run a man into BFK. Let me make sure they got it first. Boom, 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 whip, bang, yeah. Yeah, I have Genia. Right? No going through my wall. <laughs> okay. You guys got that? That's about all the offense I'm going to teach you with this. Is there more? There's tons more. But that's the best of it, right? Learn, um, like, when you guys are learning stuff, there's so much to learn, 
right? I mean, there's, there's punching, there's kicking, there's clinch, there's grappling, there's sticks, there's not, you know, you got to prioritize your training, okay? Get these basics down for the clinch. If, if clinch is your thing, there's slap knees, all these other things you can do, um, stuff like that. But now I want to get into the defense, okay? And um, when I teach defense, no matter what it is, I try to start at the worst possible scenario. Uh, my philosophy is, you know, climbing out of hell. If you can survive in the worst place, you can survive anything. So the first thing we're going to do off the knee is eat it. If you eat it, you own it. So when he needs me, <sighs> grab it. Okay? When you, get, when you hurt something, what's your natural reaction anyway? You grab that spot. Okay? And I want you to role play this. Here's what I don't want you to do. Go ahead. Knee me. Camera's on there. Yeah, there's no way anything could hurt my head to steal even because there's a camera on, right? Because when you get hit, you're going to role play. And I want this boom, to be part of your load, right? And it's also you have that contact reflex. Like when you get hurt, it's your natural reaction to go fetal. Don't stay there because you'll, you'll, you'll give in to that pain, right? Once you go fetal, your own body language starts talking to you. Boom, get up like, I'm that hurt. I'm going to punish you for that, okay? And I want to be outside him, okay? So he knees, oh, I want to be outside him, okay? If I'm not outside him, right, well, now maybe he jumps guard or some other kooky shit, right? So if you're there, pass it, okay? So right now, if you eat it, own it. Go ahead. I'm going to stick you with them because I don't know how long my hip's going to hold up. Yeah. And dude, for you, that's karate hikate. Right? I mean, you just keep that in that nice tight hikate and we're going to start, we're going to start punching away pretty soon. Right? Right. Sweeps, all kinds of stuff you can do, right? But right now, Muay Thai level one, we're not going to throw and... We'll do a little bit of takedown stuff because there's some you can do in Muay Thai. Yeah. But even when we do it, we're not going to dump people because it looks good for the camera. Right? I'm not, I'm not one of those teachers. Yeah. Let me see, ladies. You both got it? Yeah. You eat it. You own it. There you go. You look like you're about to carry her over the threshold with that one. <laughs> Good. Good. Okay, now I want you to punch the guy while you're while you have him up there, but I don't want this for a punch, right? We're you know we're going to do this later where we have these body punches, but I don't want this. There's no power here. I want everybody to do this. Put your hand on your hip. Put your arm out here, right? Grab your mug of beer, and we're going to sing pirate songs, <laughs> right? This battering ram, I call it the pirate punch. Okay. And this could be a body shot, this could be an uppercut, you could bring it over and under and you can get a lot of power on it, right? Okay? But this sucks, okay? So he needs me, if I eat it, I own it, see how I get my posture back? And I'm going to hop you around this way, ding, 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 right? This is a waste of time. Swing. Boom, 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 boom. Liver, uppercut, boom. Right? Put that in his ear, the back of his head, right? You get some big power off that pirate punch. Go ahead. Get your posture up and swing. Right. You can feel the bad punch too if you want. Try punching like that. Right? <laughs> Just the body. <laughs> Boom! You eat it, you own it. Yeah. You see, it's almost hard not to throw the guy here, right? Because right, all you got to do to throw him, if you want, is make a quick turn. Right? But. Right. <laughs> that's what people would be doing. That's, yeah, but that's what you want to do. You want to have good acting. You want to role play that shot, because that's what's going to happen for real. So I said, so many times we do this, and guys are like, so he need me. I'm not going to act like I'm hurt in front of guys. Just chicks in the room. Role play it, because that's where you're going to be. 
right? And you want that, that contact reflex, that position that you're in, that body language, that's all part of that tactile awareness we talked about, right? Okay, the next one we do is called the belt. Matt, I'm gonna put you over on this side. And uh, when we do the belt, don't do two hands, okay? I don't know if we can mention UFC fighters' names, or we probably can't even mention that, but there was a famous MMA guy, and a guy clinched him, and he put both hands down like this, and he, the guy threw a few, knee, few knees, and then he pushed him away, kneed him in the face, won the fight. So they had a rematch, and the guy grabbed him like that, and the guy did this again, and he threw a few knees, and then he pushed him back, hit him in the face, and broke his face again, right? So this is not the way to block knees, okay? We're gonna do something called the belt. And so he's clinching with me. I want you to have your right foot forward for this. We'll talk about why later. I was taught this, the belt, go ahead, when he knees, see I'm actually below his belt, right? I'm have the back of my hand, two bones in meat. Don't do this, there goes your fingers or your wrist. Don't do this, Don't, it's your fingers or your wrist. I want to be staying in touch with him. Go ahead, me. I'm in touch, okay? Because I can read, I don't want to do this, me. The first piece of information I have is something just blasted through my arm. When I'm doing this, I don't even have to look. He throws one knee, when he throws the other knee, I'll change my structure a little bit, okay? I'm gonna face the camera here for a second. Nope, this, you can see there. When it's that far knee, right? Nope, it's okay. I have the ramp. When the other knee comes up, I don't have enough of a ramp, I'll give him a little bit of structure. It's a structure because it's close to this. After this point, you start to lose that structure. This is perfect, structure of the bone. After this point, you start to lose the structure, okay? So he's gonna start kneeing me, both knees, anytime he wants. Yep. Am I looking at it, guys? Can I tell which knee he's gonna throw? And he's just gonna get tired. Okay, so this is called the leg belt. Go ahead, do it, do it slow. Don't figure out you're doing it wrong by eating a hard knee. <laughs> yeah, so stay in touch with her hip. So, so stay just below, hold on, stay just below her hip. This one's a ramp. The other one comes, you need to bend your arm a little bit. But you'll be able to feel that even when you're not looking. Yeah. So why don't you do this? You pull her in a little bit. No, grab her and clinch. Pull her in a little bit. Uh, no, Over no. here. Now she can't see. Okay. Right? Good. Yeah. Good. We call this position ugly baby. <laughs> Come here, I'll show you why, why we, who wants to be the ugly baby. I'll be the ugly okay. baby. Okay. So guys, there's a few head positions you can have when you're holding people. So you pull them in and they're here. This is neutral, right? They're, your head's kind of round. I like that side of the head because it's flat. Okay, we call this one the baby. See, I can also crank her neck. We're not allowed to do that in amateur. If I roll this way, we call it the ugly baby. I don't want to see its face, right? But I can still crank the neck. Other things we'll do is I'll throw their face. See, I'll throw it in the crook of my arm. She can't breathe. You can either go can't see or can't breathe. I would rather go can't breathe, right? And we're going to work with some of that later taking away somebody's breath, and then give them a very special strike when they take that first inhale. Those suck, right? Yeah. Okay, right? <laughs> Stay in touch. Yeah. So here, so don't, guys, don't do your bone. Don't do one bone. There's not enough tactile. You don't have enough skin and nerves here. Two bones of meat. Yeah, go ahead, bring it back. So stay touching, right? Now he needs with the other one, you bend it. Go back to the touch. Yeah, bend it. Go back to the touch. Right. This will take some practice, but I feel confident doing it with even big people. Right? Yeah. You just, you can't stay there too long because they'll figure out an answer, right? Part of our Muay Thai level two, ha our clinch level two, half of clinch level two is counters to clinch level one. Right? And then some extra stuff. Okay, you guys got that? That one takes some practice. It's worth practicing. It's worth practice because we're going to weaponize it now, right? We're going to weaponize it first with, um, well, let's start with the pirate punch, okay? So he's got me. I can't see. I can feel. He knees. When that foot hits the ground, I punch him. Either solar plexus, liver, uppercut, or I throw this wrap stroke. 
Now I want you guys to do something. When he knees, knee, when his foot hits the ground, I want you guys to clap. Let's try this. Go ahead. I'm, I'm not going to do any. I'll just block. But go ahead. You guys clap. 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 That's when you hit him. Go. He's kneeing. Clap. Bang. 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 Okay, time. Why? Because you said so, coach. I never want you to do anything because they said so. I want you to explain why. Because if you know why I'm doing it here, you're going to figure out some places to use it elsewhere. When he's clinching, when he's kneeing me, his stomach's pretty tight. He flexed that. When he brings it back, he's pretty stretched. Okay? And uh, can I, what was your first name again? Victor. Victor, can I use you? Because I know you cried your black belt and stuff like that. I'm not going to hit you hard with nothing, mm -hmm. but it, just relax, right? And blow out all your air. I'm, I'm not going to hit you hard, right? The one, first ones will hit you hard, but they're not going to hurt. Blow out all your air, toughen up your stomach. Tighten up your stomach. <laughs> Cry to guy, no problem, right? Okay. Look, we're at the doctor's office. Take a deep breath for me. And just that tap, can you feel a difference? Oh, yeah. Right? And here's the deal, guys. I know teachers who will go, wham, and drop the guy. You don't need to do that crap. But do this, we call it popping the bubble. Do this with your partner. Have him blow out his air. And he tightens up his stomach, right? And then he takes a deep breath. And just a little tap, you yeah. should go like, shit, that hurts more. Because what's the job for your ribs? It's to protect, your, protect your organs, right? So when you let the air out, your lungs are small, all your organs can hide behind the ribs, you can tighten up your abs real well, those punches are coming, your organs are going, ah, you can't get me, right? But when you take that deep breath, all of a sudden it's stretched. Guys, this works even stand up. You hear that guy going, you start hearing that wheeze, time it. That you're, you don't want to go and go. You don't want to hear and go, right? Because now he's, right? You want to get on that wheeze. Whoa, that's the worst body shot, okay? Well, I mean, solar plexus shot, liver's the worst. But I want you guys to try, uh, try that pop in the bubble first. Blow out all your air, tighten your stomach, get tapped a little bit, take in a deep breath, tap them. Right? So you felt these before, right? Yeah. Okay, so I want you to do this. Because like you're going to be too nice to him. And I'm not going to be an asshole, right? Oh, but blow out all your air. Blow out all your air. Tighten up your stomach. Blow it out. Let me hear you. Good. Okay, take a deep breath for me. But just that little bit, you feel, right? Okay. Another thing I'll do with that is just to do this. Because when I do this, people will still go, huh. It almost like knocks the wind out of you a little bit. Right, because right, everything's stretched, and you just feel that bad stomach mm -hmm. shot. Yeah. And I don't care if you're doing a thousand sit-ups today. Right. Your abs aren't involved yeah, that way. Especially when you're buffing and that. And we're going to cause that. Yeah. We're going to cause that. Okay. Everybody got to uh, feel that? Okay, so Matt. So uh, that works anywhere along the body. Uh, yeah, we should get this word. The equator goes this way, the prime meridian goes this way, right? If I stretch him, everything across that prime meridian is a little weaker. If I stretch him, liver, net, all the things across that prime meridian are weaker because they're, they're bubbled, they're stretched, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to this now, right? But you guys are going to try to hit on your own. We're not going to clap, but you guys are going to listen to his feet. Go ahead. And you're going to go, boom, 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 boom. Right? When I come over the top, either I'm right here, get him in the ear, I don't know where your jaw goes, his neck, this base of your skull, your medulla oblongata if you want to sound smart, right? <laughs> but that's your, that's your motor skills part of your brain. Go ahead, try that. That's weaponizing the belt with the pirate punch. Go ahead. Oh, no, don't, don't switch your arms. Put your right foot forward. Yeah, now only block with your right arm. Yeah, touch, touch. Yes! So I had to touch it with your now when he knees. You need you feel it right away. Yeah. Nope. Knee when it comes down. All right. Ready? I'm gonna clap. Yeah. Nope, wrong yeah. knee. So you gotta knee normal though too. Go ahead. Just start kneeing. And I'm gonna no, knee normal, put it down. Put it down, put it down, put it down. Knee nor, knee normal. Boom. Bang. Put it down right away. No, no, but I want I don't want you to leave it up there. I want you to just knee normal. Keep going. Uh. Uh. You can switch knees if you want. Uh, 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 right? And you'll get it. Practice it. Well, yeah, so every time I 
Bang. 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 So you can leave this here. You can leave it there. Yeah, you can leave it. You can leave it there. Right? But that takes some practice. You know, especially karate people. We all want to do Hikate. It takes practice to, to yeah, leave that, that hand there, there and swing that. I got tapped on the back of the skull just like that. Oh, yeah. Ago. Eyeballs I was, jiggle. I was gone for like three hours. Yeah. Like. Eyeballs <laughs> jiggle. Yeah. So, guy, one of the other things I said, don't switch your hands, right? And I also said to put your right leg forward. I wanted your left leg back. The reason I want your left leg back, Matt, is a little uh, biology for you guys. This punch hurts more than this punch. Why? You know what? Your liver's here. This sucks, right? This is the worst body shot around. Not, I mean, you had people ruptured somebody's spleen. I'm not saying this isn't going to hurt. But one of the other things you could do by punching somebody in the spleen, you might give them a second win, right? So EMTs know this. And if you look at a lot of boxing coaches, especially old days, the guy would be in the corner and some, the coach would be talking to him, having his hand here, right? Or somebody would be behind him doing this. Okay, you ever, do you remember that? Does that stick yeah. in your head now? What he's doing is he's pumping his spleen. Your spleen is a reservoir for blood. So I'm trying to, you're literally giving this guy a second wind. All right? And I'm not saying don't hit this side of the body. I'm just saying this one's like magically delicious. It's just, it's just so nasty. If you ever took a big liver punch, you know. So when I say to do this, do your right hand. So now you have your good hand and not get hit, which is still pretty important, right? And again, guys, street fight. That could be, right? But we're not doing, we're not doing street fight. The next we're going to do is spike and pass. There's three ways to pass. I don't like one of them. One of them's okay. One of them's good. Okay, we're going to do this kind of loosely. Just so that, imagine this hand is here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. For them, imagine the hand is here. So when he knees, I can pass this with my palm. I don't like that. I can miss this, right? I can pass it with my elbow. So like if my hand was here, come with me again, I could pass this with my elbow. It's cutting it close, okay? My hand's already here. This is an easy pass. Oops, accidents. <laughs> we do a lot of jujitsu accidents later. So <laughs> you can put both hands up here, right? You could pass this way. I don't like it, but it's there, right? You go ahead and again. I could pass this way. I don't like it, but it's there. I love this pass, right? And see how I kind of put my leg up to him? Because I'm going to lock things up and, and uh, throw them, you know, I'll, I'll throw them down afterwards. But, you know, there's some throws you can do a Muay Thai, some you can't. So I want you guys to try those three passes, your palm, your elbow, your opposite arm. Three passes. Go ahead. So that's some new clinch work for you guys over there, too. That's the best one, right? Yes. I mean, you've passed Muay Thai level one clinch. Did I show you palm and elbow before? Yeah. yeah. I know I didn't show you the cheerleader. No, you didn't show yeah. cheerleader. Yeah. To just scoop that leg up. I mean, I'll cradle him and drop him. <laughs> take that, take that scoop, cradle him up, and die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hit your shoulder, yep. <coughs> no, your other elbow. Yeah. Right. It's there, but it's not as easy. Yeah, the other one's right off the belt. Okay? Okay, good. Right? I'll go with you. And that's, uh... So one of the other, some other little dirty things that I do in here, right? When uh, he's clinching up, when I do that, right? Like if that's for real, like I said, I'll scoop this, I'll grab his head called, and grab my own hands called a cradle and just take a dive. That's a horrible fall for him. I get to laugh, land on all squishy parts of my opponent. He gets to land on whatever we're fighting on that day, right? But even Muay Thai wise, when I do this, see how I put my leg in there? And I put my hand, see how that traps his hand? I got a little arm bar. It's an accident, accident. Every time I do it, it's an accident. See where my hand is? This is something I was going to show you later. 
but it's something I call the Michelangelo, okay, that you can have that hand in there and just chisel away at, cool. so far, right? <laughs> I mean, if, if, if the referee sees you around his neck, yeah. you're kind of a dick and it's definitely illegal, but, <laughs> but I mean, you know, even this, this, this what's this called in, uh, in your jaw point? This is super nervy, bang, but I use that little ball pin point in my hand, but even still, getting this little bit of a, an arm bar, and then you lock and bang, 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 bang. You can still get knees from there too, right? So now when you pass that, lock your hand over, little Michelangelo, maybe knee him in the face. Don't really knee him in the face in class. Good. Push it. Nope. So, That's probably ready? Somebody takes no, so, back. so, no, Stay so go ahead. You clinch him. You clinch him. Back. Yeah. So, pass it. Yeah. This hand over. Uh, now, you got to straighten that arm. Push, so, push his face away. Oh, so go. So, so lock this into here. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Now, start smashing him. Yeah. Okay, right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm an idiot. I tried to muscle it and you'd kill me. <laughs> That's the thing. Get people where they still want to fight back, where they yeah. think they're still in it. That's why I don't throw people right away. I can't hit them anymore. Yeah. I mean, Muay Thai, you can't hit them anymore. So get him in that back off balance position. Get in as many hammers as you can before you know he falls or the referee breaks it up. Bing. Yeah. Good. So here's how. See the trick. The trick is this. This arm bar. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. Now, if you get his head down, you can step out and knee him in a melon. So get that. Get that. Get that. Wrap her over, wrap whoop, wrap over, get that lock, push his head away, get some Michelangelo goes. Now you step out. Get it, push his head over this way. Get your step out, Matt. Now you knee him in the head. Bang, or in the ribs, right? Yeah. Right? But he's wide open for that. He can't block it. You got that arm trapped, right? Yeah. Matt, for a second. What's really cool about this, right? He's not blocking anything now. I've got this arm. Besides all of this means in the big bubbles over his knee, there's knee, right? And he can't block it. You have the arm that he needs to block it trapped. It's pretty sweet, right? Okay, now we're going to spike. 